Hello everyone, here we are. We're gonna start Deuteronomy tonight, so let's get going. These are the words Moses spoke to all Israel in the wilderness east of the Jordan, that is the Arabah. Opposite Suf, S-U-P-H, <clears throat> excuse me, between Paran and Tophel, Laban, Hazeroth, and Dizahab. It takes 11 days to go from Harab to Kadesh Barnea by the Mount Seir Road, and Seir is S-E-I-R. In the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses proclaimed to the Israelites all that the Lord had commanded him concerning them. This was after he defeated Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, and at Edrai had defeated Og, king of Bashan, who reigned in Ashtaroth. East of the Jordan in the territory of Moab, Moses began to expound this law, saying, The Lord our God said to us at Horeb, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go to all the neighboring peoples in the Arabah, in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the Negev, and along the coast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, <clears throat> the Euphrates. See, I've given you this land. Go in and take possession of the land the Lord swore he'd give to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their descendants after them. At that time, I said to you, you are too heavy a burden for me to carry alone. The Lord your God has increased your numbers so that today you're as numerous as the stars in the sky. This is Moses talking to them. May the Lord, the God of your ancestors, increase you a thousand times and bless you as he has promised. But how can I bear your problems and your burdens and your disputes all by myself? Choose some wise, understanding, and respected men from each of your tribes, and I'll set them over you. You answered me, what you propose to do is good. So I took the leading men of your tribes, wise and respected men, and appointed them to have authority over you as commanders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens, and as tribal officials. And I charged your judges at that time, quote, hear the disputes between your people and judge fairly, whether the case is between two Israelites or between an Israelite and a foreigner residing among you. Don't show partiality in judging. Hear both small and great alike. Do not be afraid of anyone, for judgment belongs to God. Bring me any case too hard for you and I'll hear it, end quote. And at that time, I told you everything you were to do. <clears throat> then... As the Lord God commanded us, we set out from Horeb and went towards the hill country of the Amorites through all that vast and dreadful wilderness that you've seen. And so we reached Kadesh Barnea. Then I said to you, you've reached the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. See, the Lord your God's given you the land. Go up and take possession of it as the Lord, the God of your ancestors told you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Then all of you came to me and said, let us send men ahead to spy out the land for us and bring back a report about the route we are to take and the towns we will come to. <clears throat> the idea seemed good to me, so I selected 12 of you, one man from each tribe. They left and went up into the hill country and came to the Valley of Eshcol and explored it. Taking with them some of the fruit of the land, they brought it down to us and reported, it's a good land that the Lord our God is giving us. But you were unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You grumbled in your tents and said, the Lord hates us, so he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go? Our brothers have made our hearts melt in fear. They say the people are stronger and taller than we are. The cities are large with walls up to the sky. We even saw the Anakites there. Then I said to you, don't be terrified. Don't be afraid of them. The Lord your God, who's going before you, will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes and in the wilderness. 
there you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son all the way you went until you reached this place. In spite of this, you didn't trust in the Lord your God who went ahead of you on your journey in fire by night and in a cloud by day to search out places for you to camp and to show you the way you should go. When the Lord heard what you said, he was angry and solemnly swore, quote, no one from this evil generation shall see the good land I swore to give your ancestors, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh. He'll see it, and I'll give him and his descendants the land he set his feet on because he followed the Lord wholeheartedly, end quote. Because of you, the Lord became angry with me also and said, you shall not enter it either. But your assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, will enter it. Encourage him because he'll lead Israel to inherit, inherit it. And the little ones that you said would be taken captive, your children who don't know yet no good from bad, they'll enter the land. I'll give it to them and they'll take possession of it. But as for you, turn around and set out towards the desert along the route to the Red Sea. You know, that's interesting because... From what I understand, Moses isn't seeing the promised land because he misrepresented God with Aaron. But that's okay. He's summing it all up. He's saying, look, you know, the whole thing has been a wash and now I don't even get to go in. Then you replied, we've sinned against the Lord. We'll go up and fight as the Lord our God commanded us. So every one of you put on his weapons, thinking it easy to go up into the hill country. But the Lord said to me, tell them, don't go up and fight because I won't be with you. You'll be defeated by your enemies, end quote. So I told you, but you would not listen. You rebelled against the Lord's command and in your arrogance, you marched up to the hill country. The Amorites who lived in those hills came out against you. They chased you like a swarm of bees and beat you down from Seir all the way to Horma. You came back and wept before the Lord, but he paid no attention to your weeping and turned a deaf ear to you. And so you stayed in Kadesh many days, all the time you spent there. Hmm. Deuteronomy 2. Then we turned back and set out towards the wilderness along the route to the Red Sea as the Lord had directed me. For a long time we made our way around the hill country of Seir, then the Lord said to me, you've made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north. Give the people. So they were going around and around and around. Whew. Give the people these orders. You're about to pass through the territory of your relatives, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir. They'll be afraid of you, but be very careful. Don't provoke them to war, for I won't give you any of their land, not even enough to put your foot on. I've given Esau the hill country of Seir as his own. You're to pay them in silver for the food you eat and the water you drink. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He's watched over your journey through this vast wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord God has, your God has been with you and you haven't lacked anything. So we went on past our relatives, the descendants of Esau who live in Seir. We turned from the Arabah Road, which comes up from Elath and Ezion Geber, and traveled along the desert road of Moab. Then the Lord said to me, do not harass the Moabites or provoke them to war, for I won't give you any part of their land. I've given Ar, A-R, to the descendants of Lot as a possession. So the land was called Ar, and it was given to Lot as a possession. In parentheses, it says the Emites used to live there, a people strong and numerous and as tall as the Anakites. Like the Anakites, they too were considered Raphaites, but the Moabites called them Emites. Horites used to live in Seir, but the descendants of Esau drove them out. They destroyed the Horites from before them and settled in their place just as Israel did in the land the Lord gave them as their possession. And the Lord said, now get up and cross the Zered Valley. So we crossed the valley. 38 years passed from the time we left Kadesh Barnea until we crossed the Zered Valley. By then, they, that entire generation of fighting men had perished from the camp as the Lord had sworn to them. The Lord's hand was against them until he had completely eliminated them from the camp. Now, when the last of these fighting men among the people had died, the Lord said to me, Today you are to pass by the region of Moab at Ar. When you come to the Ammonites, don't harass them or provoke them to war, for I will not give you possession of any land belonging to the Ammonites. I've given it as a possession to the descendants of Lot. 
that in quote in parentheses that too was considered a land of the Rephaites who used to live there but the Ammonites called them Zamzamites they were a people strong and numerous and as tall as the Anakites the Lord destroyed them before the Ammonites who drove them out and settled in their place the Lord had done the same for the descendants of Esau who lived in Seir when he destroyed the Horites from before them they drove them out and have lived in their place to this day and as for the Avites who lived in the villages as far as, Ga as Gaza, the Gaftarites coming out from Kaftor destroyed them and settled in their place. Set out now and cross the, Amon Gor the Arnon Gorge. See, I've given into your hands Sihon, the Amorite king of Heshbon, and his country. Begin to take possession of it and engage him in battle. This very day I'll begin to put the terror and fear of you on all nations under heaven. They'll hear reports of you and will tremble and be in anguish because of you. From the desert of Ketamoth, I sent messengers to Sihon, king of Heshbon, offering peace and saying, Let us pass through your country. We'll stay on the main road. We won't turn aside to the right or to the left. Sell us food to eat and water to drink for their price in silver. Only let us pass through on foot as the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir, and the Moabites, who live in Ar, did for us, until we cross the Jordan into the land of the Lord, the Lord our God is giving us. But Sihon, king of Heshbon, refused to let us pass through, for the Lord your God is, had made his spirit stubborn and his heart obstinate in order to give him into your hands, as he's done now. So if you notice, Moses is recapping everything because they didn't have computers or books, okay? We know that, obviously. So the bottom line is storytelling is where it's at for them, and that's what we're hearing is a whole rehash, recap. The Lord said to me, See, I've begun to deliver Sihon and his country over to you. Now begin to conquer and possess his land. When Sihon and all his army came out to meet us in battle at Jahaz, the Lord our God delivered him over to us, and we struck him down together with his sons and his whole army. At that time, we took all his towns and completely destroyed them, men, women, and children. We left no survivors. But the livestock and the plunder from the towns we'd captured, we carried off for ourselves from a rower on the rim of the Arnon Gorge and from the town in the gorge. Even as far as Gilead, not one town was too strong for us. The Lord our God gave us all of them. But in accordance with the command of the Lord our God, you didn't encroach on any of the land of the Ammonites, neither the land along the course of the Jabbok, nor that around the towns in the hills. Okay? Here we go, Deuteronomy 3. Next, we turned and went up along the road towards Bashan, and Og, king of Bashan, with his whole army, marched out to meet us in the battle of Edrai. At Edrai. The Lord said to me, Don't be afraid of him, for I've delivered him into your hands, along with his whole army and his land. Do to him what you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon. So the Lord our God also gave into our hands Og, king of Bashan, and all his army. We struck them down, leaving no survivors. At that time, we took all his cities. There was not one of the 60 cities that we didn't take from them. The whole region of Argob, Og's kingdom, and Bashan, all these cities were fortified with high walls and with gates and bars, and there were also a great many unwalled villages. We completely destroyed them as we'd done with Sihon, king of Heshbon destroying every city, men, women, and children. But all the livestock and the plunder from their cities we carried off for ourselves. So at that time, we took from these two kings of the Amorites the territory east of the Jordan from the Arnon Gorge as far as Mount Hermon. Hermon is called Sirion by the Sidonians. The Amorites call it Senir, S-E-N-I-R. We took all the towns on the plateau and all, and that was in parentheses, by the way. We took all the towns on the plateau and all Gilead and all Bashan, as far as the Selica and Edrai, as far as Selica and Edrai, towns of Og's kingdom and Bashan, in parentheses, Og king of Bashan was the last of the Rephaites. His bed was decorated with iron and was more than nine cubits long and four cubits wide. It is still in Reba of the Ammonites. So nine cubits long, a cubit is 18 inches. So we're looking at about a 15 foot long bed and four cubits wide is what? Is seven, eight, I don't know, what is it? Eight, nine feet across? This guy was huge. Of the land that we took over at that time, I gave the Reubenites and the Gadites the territory north of Aroer by the 
Arnon Gorge, including half of the hill country of Gilead together with its towns. The rest of Gilead and also all Bashan, the kingdom of Og, I gave to the half tribe of Manasseh. The whole region, in parentheses, of Argob and Bashan used to be known as the land of the Rephaites. Jair, a descendant of Manasseh, took the whole region of Argob as far as the border of the Geshurites and the Machatites. It was named after him so that to this day, Bashan is called Havath Jair, Jair, and that's the end of the parentheses. And I gave Gilead to make her. But to the Reubenites and the Gadites, I gave the territory extending from Gilead down to the Arnon Gorge, the middle of the gorge being the border, and out to the Jabbok River, which is the border of the Ammonites. The western border was the Jordan and the Arabah from Kinnereth to the Sea of the Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, below the slopes of Pisgah. I commanded you at that time, the Lord your God has given you this land to take possession of it. But all your able-bodied men armed for battle must cross over ahead of the other Israelites. However, your wives, your children, and your livestock, I know you have much livestock, may stay in the towns I've given you until the Lord gives rest to your fellow, fellow Israelites. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sinuses. I think I suffer from them all year long. Um, until the Lord gives rest to your fellow, fellow Israelites as he has to you, and they too have taken over the land that the Lord your God is giving them across, giving them, giving them across the Jordan. After, after that, each of you may go back to the possession I've given you. So he's saying what we already know. Uh, he's recounting that he told the uh, half tribe of Manasseh and the Gadites and the Reubenites that they had to go first into the Battle of Canaan, even though their land wasn't on that side of the Jordan. They had to go in and help their brothers win the land, and then they could come back and settle east of the Jordan. At that time, I commanded Joshua, you've seen with your own eyes all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings. The Lord will do the same to all the kingdoms over there where you're going. Don't be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. At that time, I pleaded with the Lord, Sovereign Lord, you've begun to show to your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or earth or on earth who can do the deeds and mighty works you do? Let me go over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, that fine hill country and Lebanon. Poor Moses, God told him no, and he's asking once again. But because of you, the Lord was angry with me. He's blaming it on the Israelites, and I guess it's all related, and would not listen to me. So he's saying, you guys were rebellious. I called you rebellious, and the Lord rebuked me for not representing him properly. Uh, and I lost my opportunity to go into the promised land. But because of you, the Lord was angry with me and would not listen to me. That's enough, the Lord said. Don't speak to me anymore about this matter. Go up the top, to the top of Pisgah and look west and north and south and east. Look at the land with your own eyes since you're not going to cross this Jordan. But commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him for he'll lead this people across and will cause them to inherit the land that you will see. And so we stayed in the valley near Beth Peor. That's sad, but God knows what he's doing and he's not trying to be mean to Moses. There's a reason for everything and it's always a good reason, even if it hurts. All right, Deuteronomy 4. Now, Israel, here are the decrees and laws I'm about to teach you. Follow them so you may live and may go in and take possession of the land of the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the land the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do not add to what I commanded you and don't subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. You saw with your own eyes what the Lord did at Baal Peor. The Lord your God destroyed from among you everyone who followed the Baal of Peor. But all of you who held fast to the Lord your God are still alive today. See, I've taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me so that you may follow them in the land you're entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, surely this, is, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws I'm setting before you today? <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you don't forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb when he said to me, Assemble the people before me to hear my words so that they may learn to revere me as long as they live in the land and may teach them to their children. End quote. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while it blazed with fire to the very heavens with black clouds and deep darkness. Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words, but saw no form. There was only a voice. He declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to follow and then wrote them on two stone tablets. And the Lord directed me at that time to teach you the decrees and laws you're to follow in the land that you're crossing the Jordan to possess. You saw no form of any kind that day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire. Therefore, watch yourselves very carefully so that you don't become corrupt and make for yourselves an idol, an image of any shape, whether formed like a man or a woman or like an animal on earth or any bird that flies in the air or like any creature that moves along the ground or any fish in the waters below. And when you look up to the sky and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the heavenly array, don't be enticed into bowing down to them and worshiping things. The Lord your God has a portion to all the nations under heaven. But as for you, the Lord took you and brought you out of the iron smelting furnace out of Egypt to be the people of his inheritance as you now are. The Lord was angry with me because of you and he solemnly swore that I would not cross the Jordan. This is a sticking point for Moses, isn't it? And enter the good land the Lord your God is giving you as your inheritance. I will die in this land. I will not cross the Jordan, but you're about to cross over and take possession of that good land. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. After you've had children and grandchildren and have lived in the land for a long time, if you then become corrupt and make any kind of idol, doing evil in the eyes of the Lord your God, and arousing his anger, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you this day, that you will quickly perish from the land that you're crossing the Jordan to possess. You will not live there long, but will certainly be destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and only a few of you will survive among the nations to which the Lord will drive you. Boy, this is prophecy, isn't it? <clears throat> there you will worship man-made gods of wood and stone, which cannot see or hear or eat or smell. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you'll find him. If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul... When you're in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon and dis or destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors, which he confirmed to them by oath. Ask now about the former days, long before your time, from the day God created human beings on the earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds like all the things the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Beside him, there is no other. <clears throat> Excuse me. Besides him, there is no other. From heaven, he made you hear his voice to discipline you. On earth, he showed you his great fire and you heard his words from out of the fire. Because he loved your ancestors and chose their descendants after them, he brought you out of Egypt by his presence, capital P, and his great strength to drive out before you nations greater and stronger than you and to bring you into their land to give it to you for your inheritance as it is today. Acknowledge and take heart this day that the Lord is God in heaven above and on earth below. There is no other. Keep his decrees and commands which I'm giving you today so that it may go well with you and your children after you and that you may live long in the land the Lord your God gives you for all time. Then Moses set aside three cities east of the Jordan to which anyone who had killed a person could flee 
if they had unintentionally killed a neighbor without malice of forethought. They could flee into one of these cities and save their life. The cities were these, Bezer in the Wilderness Plateau, that's B-E-Z-E-R, for the Reubenites, Ramoth in Gilead, for the Gadites and Golan in Bashan. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I read it backwards. The cities were these, Bezer or Bezer in the Wilderness Plateau for the Reubenites, Ramoth in Gilead for the Gadites, and Golan, remember the Golan Heights, we hear about them all the time, in Bashan for the Manas Manassites. This is the law Moses set before the Israelites. These are the stipulations, decrees, and laws Moses gave them when they came out of Egypt and they and were in the valley near Beth Peor, east of the Jordan, in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon and was defeated by Moses and the Israelites as they came out of Jordan. They took possession of his land in the land of Og, king of Bashan, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan. This land extended from a rower on the rim of the Arnon Gorge to Mount Sirion, that is Hermon, H-E-R-M-O-N, and included all the Arabah east of the Jordan as far as the Dead Sea below the slopes of Pisgah. And that's it. Tomorrow we'll do Deuteronomy 5. But what I want to think about right now is that Moses did all the work and did not get into the promised land. So what that shows you is that many people make the path, but they don't live to see the end of it, okay? But they dig the trench deep for us or plow the path so that we can walk it, okay? And they're valuable. They're not like, oh, you didn't get to see it, so you don't count. Oh, they count. They really count. But we see that a lot. We see people that don't seem to be repaid in this life for work that they've done. But they will be repaid. You know, I'm sighing because I'm thinking about a lot of stuff that I did that seems to have gone unnoticed, but it's okay. I love you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow. We'll pick it up at Deuteronomy 5, and you be blessed, and don't forget to pray, okay? Pray for me. I'm praying for you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.